Right, so we're going to talk you through how to play the game of shuffleboard, but before we get into all the rules and that sort of thing, let's just take you through the different components of an actual shuffleboard table so you understand what they are all called. So first of all, let's start off with the main part, which is the board. This is also known as the plank. This is made out of um, hardened maple um, in a butcher blocks kind of style. Then you've got the actual cradle that it's sat in. So this is the part that's going all around here. The end part is known as the horseshoe. And down the sides of the board, you've got what's called a gutter, which is where the actual pucks themselves will fall into uh, if you get knocked off or your aim isn't very good. Um, you've got legs underneath, which legs are legs, don't really need to see the legs, but the legs are there. Um, scoring is done, the standard using an abacus system, which is here, which you just move along um, uh, to be able to allot your points scored. Um, but you've got the options of getting a electronic uh, scoreboard, which is what we've got here, um, and then additional lighting, which we've got here as well. Um, just sort of lights the playfield, looks quite nice. It depends what the environment is that you're putting it into, but obviously having the playfield well lit is very important. So um, optional lighting is available for pretty much all the different shuffleboards that we sell. In terms of the um, accessories or the, 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 the pieces that you need to be able to play the game, We've got, first of all, we've got the, I've referred to earlier on, those pucks, but they can also be called weights. So these are very heavy metal-based units uh, with a coloured top. So these ones uh, are red, and then you've got black for, for the two teams. Then you've got this, which is called shuffleboard wax. Now, this can also be called silicon wax. It can be called sand. Some people call it cheese. It looks a bit like Parmesan cheese, um, but it's an essential part of preparing the playing surface of the board or the plank to be able to uh, run the pucks along it. So I'll show you what's involved with that in a moment. And then the last part of the kind of key accessories is this wiper board, which is what you use to basically clean the surface of the board off before you put down your silicon wax to be ready for a game. Okay, so before we actually play a game, let's get the playing surface of the shuffle board ready for a game. So key thing is to make sure it's been cleaned so you can buy a cleaner to clean the surface of it. Then you apply a silicon spray onto there. Then the key part that I talked about earlier on is a shuffleboard wax, which I've got here, which I'll show you. As I mentioned before, it looks a little bit like Parmesan, um, but it's actually made of silicon, and some manufacturers will use very small broken up walnut shells in there as well. So the more silicon in it, the faster it will play. So we sell a number of different speeds of wax. Um, this is a uh, T2 speed um, that comes in this Brunswick set here. So, so that's what it looks like. Uh, and now I'll show you how to put it onto the board. So the key when you put the wax onto the board is don't put on too much, don't put on too little. If you put on too much, you'll just end up with loads on there and it'll be like you're trying to push the weight through a snow drift, which isn't much fun. If you don't put enough on there, then the weight is prone to just get sort of stuck on its way down. It won't glide down all the way. So uh, with a bit of practice, you'll get used to it. I'm gonna show you um, putting some onto here. Hopefully I'll manage to do it uh, to the right level so that there's enough. So there we are. So you just sort of see, you're just sprinkling it on there, going left and right. Then you get the scoreboard in the way. And then you just keep on going down here. And you can just sort of see it just laying on the surface of the shuffleboard like that. With a bit of practice, you'll find that you're able to do it perfectly. And, and you know, that's a pretty good covering there. Maybe a little bit more, but pretty much spot on. All right, so we're at the end of our first go. Um, I've taken all of my shots. You can see where I'm laid out. Let's see how Josh gets on with his last puck then. So go on, Josh. Pressure shot, got to him. So um, let's try and score all of this. So first of all, let's just talk about the foul line. So here, we've got the foul line here. If you don't get across that line, you won't get any points. Um, likewise, like Josh did there, I, to be fair, did not one off myself as well. If you go off the side into the gutter, you don't get any points for that. Uh, and you can see the, the scoring zone. So the aim is to get your puck as far down to the end of the table as you can. That's where all the points to be scored. Uh, so it goes three, two, one. So anything in here uh, would be uh, scored as one point. That's the one point zone. Some boards where you've got longer tables, so say 18, 22 foot ones, you'll find that they may well have four scoring zones or even some will have five. Um, but this is a 12 foot table we're playing on. This has got three scoring zones. So this tell you how to score, um, how we're set here. So this puck here at the end uh, is just hanging off the end known as a hanger. So if it was actually dead in the middle of the third zone, I'd get three points, but because it's hanging over the end, I actually get four. Now, 
Josh's next puck has ended up here, which is ahead of my one here. So that effectively means that every single puck up this end of the table just doesn't score. So in this particular game, my puck scores four, then his puck is next. That's it, I get four points, he doesn't get any, uh, and that's it, that's the end of this end. But it's just to explain a couple of other bits to you. Where you've got the line here, to score any points, you've got to have the puck over the line so that when you look above it, you can actually see some wood between the line and the puck. So um, that's a critical point with the scoring. Um, and that's it, all these ones are up here. They just don't count because Josh's puck has stopped any of my other um, pucks scoring any points. So that's it. Okay, so our board is ready to play on. So let's explain to you um, how we get started. So uh, it can be played with two or four players. So you've got basically four pucks per team. So um, I've got my friend Josh here, he's gonna give me a hand with the demonstration. So we're just playing with the two of us, but obviously if you wanted to play with pairs, then you each get two pucks each. Um, so first thing to do is decide who's gonna have what color. So I'll have red, you can have black. Um, the key thing though is deciding who is gonna go first or most importantly, tactically, you'd want to go second. So we always use uh, paper, scissors, stone to decide. So let's go on three. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Right. So Josh is one. Uh, what do you want to do? Go first or second? You're going to let me go first. Okay. So the key thing tactically is to go second because then you're the one that's throwing the last weight or last puck because you've got control of the table, then you can decide whether you want to knock everything else off or tactically place it somewhere or potentially get the, the best score at the very end. So you'd always want to go second, which is why Josh went second. So I'll start off then. You can take your weights. So um, Josh won papers as a stone, so uh, he's elected me to go first. So let's get on with my first go. Good start. Josh is going for a good shot. Oh my god, okay. Right, so I'm now faced with a choice. Do I try and knock him off or play tactically? I just try and knock him off. Ah, okay, well, knock that one to knock that one, and that's that's how you play it. There you go, there's a skilled go. <coughs> that was a bit of a fluke, I have to say. That's not quite strong enough, but a good shot. It's defending mine nicely. So now tactically, I'm going to put mine in front of yours, hopefully, so that you can't knock yours into mine. That's reasonable. It's reasonably placed. Okay, I've got two scoring pucks now. Uh, so now this is my last one, so I've got to really make sure that I place this in front of Josh's pucks and my pucks without knocking mine off. Ah, right, so this is the benefit now for Josh having the last shot. So he's now going to just try and obliterate everything, I think. But he's not managed it. So let's score this up then, Josh. Let's see whether we agree. So I've got a three, yeah. but I've also got a two. So it's not over the line, but it's in front of yours. So those come away. That's five points. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Right, so that's one end done. Okay, great. So, right, I've won the first round. Uh, and because I won, I've got to go first uh, again this time. So let's get going. Let's just place a blocker in the middle. There we go. That's a pretty good shot. And you've used the small bend in the plan service to get around my one. And it's still spinning. So let's go again. I'm going to try and do the same. Reasonable, not as good. Aggressive. Okay, did yourself in as well. Right, so now I just need to get around my one again. Not quite hard enough. No, not strong enough. Pressure's on Josh now, look at the spin. Oh, it was very nearly good. All right, so I'm going to try and go around that side as well. I'm just try and get a bit further down. Don't go off the end, don't go off the end. Oh, he's got a hanger. Now Josh is going to be aggressive. This is where my block is coming into play. 
Oh, indecision. I wouldn't have gone that way. Dear, oh dear. So now you haven't got any pucks on the board. So we've got a hanger. So it would have been three if it had been on there, but it's gone over the edge. So I get four, five, six. Agreed? Six points. OK, so that puts me then on 11, Josh. OK, so third end. As I said, normally we'd switch ends each time, but we're always playing from the same end just because that's where the camera's set up. So let's go again. So Josh is 11 nil down. We're playing first to 15, four points needed. Let's see if I can just get it into the middle-ish. Oh, it's not too bad, that would be. Starter. She paid the price of being aggressive, didn't he, really? Oh, he's going for the twiddle again. That's nice. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay, it's going back round. Okay, right, so <coughs> let's try I'm not gonna be I might have got too much beans on that. No, it's alright, it's coming into the middle. Josh currently winning. Aggressive, but didn't pay off. Right. Try and get the results off that. I've got past you though. There we go. Two points for that. I'm still winning that. Let's just try and get on the right. Reasonably defensive. So I'm only scoring two for that so far. Let's see what we can do. Aggressive again. Oh, I think I've just about got you there. But yeah. I've got two. Do you agree with that? So that's me on to 13. Right, so potentially our last frame. OK, so our last So what have we got? That looks like, so I'm in front of you, in the two point zone. I needed two points to win. It's done. Thank you very much. So that's the end of our game. Okay, so that was a bit of a one-sided game. Uh, Josh is actually normally a very good player, um, but it gives you a bit of an idea of how the game plays and some of the tactics that are involved in it. Now, if you're interested in buying a shuffleboard for yourself, check out our website. There's stacks of different models available on there. There's loads of other buying advice as well. So you can check out all the different models we've got available. If you need some advice, you can either give us a call and our team will be able to talk you through over the phone and send you through any details via email that you might need. But if you'd like to have a game yourself, then it's free to play here. Come on down to our showroom. We can take you through the rules if there's anything you don't quite understand from watching this video. Um, and you can have a load of free games and try and get a feel for playing it yourself, some of the skills and tactics involved. Um, and I'm sure you'll find that it's great fun. We absolutely love playing shuffleboard here between us and the team. It can get quite competitive between us, um, but it's a great fun game to play. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you want to find out some more, as I say, give us a call or pop on down to come and see us. 